this on. You can put it on here. You can hold it. You can put it in your pocket. Pardon me? Uh, yes, for the next person. And be sure to turn it on.
Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the New Church of Boulder Valley. My name is David Lindruth, and I'm a guest preacher tonight, which is awesome because nobody ever wants me to preach on Christmas Eve. <laughs> so I am really, really happy to be here and looking forward to sharing the service with you. We're going to start off with some preludes, and I think Gail is going to be sort of announcing and guiding us through the basics. Sure. All right. All right. Happy Christmas Eve, everyone. We have a prelude to start, and I'd like to thank Zoe Ashba for that beautiful cello music before the service began. of life be it tattered and torn the cloak of the soldier is withered and worn but what child is this that was poverty born the peace of Christmas day the branch that bears the bright holly the dove that rests in yonder tree shines for all to see the peace of Christmas day the hope that has slumbered for two thousand years the promise that silenced one thousand fears a faith that can hobble an ocean of tears the peace of Christmas day the bride that bears the bright holly, the dove that rests in yonder tree, the light that shines for all to see, the peace of Christmas Day. troubles and care put them in columns and leave them right there the peace of Christmas day the branch that bears a bright holly the dove that rests in yonder tree the light that shines for all to see the peace of Christmas Day. The branch that bears the bright holly, the dove that rests in yonder tree, the light that shines for all to see, the peace of Christmas Day. Please stand and join us in singing our first hymn together. Oh, come all ye faithful on page 225. Drawn, I will. 
and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, that of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. O Lord God, Jesus Christ, you are our rock. You are the one who sustains us and strengthens us. You're the one who provides us healing. You're the one who lifts us up, always lifting us up, always there to raise us above our fears, above our cares, above our mortal concerns, and focusing us on a life of charity and a life of heaven. We welcome you, O oh Lord that you are born again in our hearts, that you can be truly present with all of your human love. Amen. We pray, Lord, as you taught us, our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses. Amen. Please be seated. You may re remain seated for the rest of our hymns this evening, but our next song is on page 233, The First Noel. Yeah. 
Thank you for that moving and beautiful music. Again, it's really wonderful to be spending this evening with you. So my message is about mercy. And I've been thinking a lot about mercy. I was thinking about it specifically in connection with this congregation. And I think we could probably all agree that this has been a season that has been a difficult season. Am I the only one who feels that way? No. No. In fact, I would say, if I even stretched it, we don't even have to think about this congregation. It's just been a difficult season. It's been one of those, yeah, I mean, we thought last year was bad, but this has been bad. Okay. So, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about mercy. And I was thinking a little bit, you know, doing some reading about mercy, and I, it just stuck me. I wonder how many people have wept in the last week. Anybody else? <laughs> yes. I wept today. Now, there's a lot of reasons for weeping, and sometimes we weep because we are sad, right? Or we're grieving. Or we're feeling loss. I've had a lot of loss in my, in my life this year, and I feel that loss. And it's all kind of mushed together. There's all kinds of things that cause grief and cause weeping. And one of the things I wanted to mention about weeping, because it's not all bad, and weeping is great, but weeping is, and this is maybe my definition, but I think weeping is your body saying, I need mercy. It's a call for mercy. And we, it's like we don't even have control over it. And I was even thinking about the times when I weep for joy because things are just, something happened that's just wonderful. It still feels to me to be connected in with my mercy needs with some something about mercy. Maybe it's because I see it. Now, if you're going to define mercy, mercy comes from, its root word is from the same word as misery. So mercy and misery come from the same place, except that they are opposite. Because mercy means to lift somebody up out of misery. It's the process of lifting another up out of a place of struggle, a place of strife, a, maybe a dead end, a place where there's no life to a place where there is life. And as soon as we see that, there is the advent of the Lord there he is. Because that's what this story is all about, is divine mercy. So in my preparation, I was reading, and one of the things I picked up was this statement over and over again that the face of the Lord, the Lord's face represents mercy itself, divine and infinite mercy. Can you imagine looking into the face of the Lord and seeing that mercy, that infinite desire to lift his children up out of misery and save them. I wonder, Mary and Joseph, that first night, Mary brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, laid him in a manger, they didn't know everything about what this child was going to do and who he really was. They knew how he came about, sort of. Something of the divine spark, the power of the Most High overshadowed Mary, and this baby just began to grow in her womb. They knew this was really special. But when they were looking into that baby's face for the first time, Maybe they saw something of that divine mercy, that it looked different. 
it was alive in a way that just, just caused the hair on the back of their neck to stand up, that it was mercy itself. And maybe when that baby Jesus cried, certainly that baby cried just like we cry, maybe they they saw something of that divine mercy that's represented in weeping. Maybe later on, and we, we can think of this, I'm sure they didn't at the time, but that same son of man wept over Jerusalem out of his love for all human beings and his desire to share heavenly life with them. Let's think about that. It's an incredible moment. It's it's just an incredible moment. So I think of the Lord's mercy, and I can think of really what he came on earth to do, which was bring a sense and an access of that mercy back to human beings so that we could be raised up, so that we weren't so plowed with our attention into self-desire, into worldliness, into the brutality of life at that time. And that he gave us the truth to enable us to be lifted up today. Even though circumstances are different, the darkness is still the same. And he's still there to lift us up. And through his life on earth, he, he impacted the way spirituality works in our world. He reorganized heaven. He allowed his strength of love and his truth and wisdom to filter down through heaven and reach our hearts and inspire us and give us strength to live. So he did that out of his pure mercy. Mercy itself. And I think about the word becoming flesh and dwelling with us. And I think that's maybe expressive of a little bit of a double meaning that it can be the word that became flesh, that became human and lived with us, and we can read about that in the New Testament, and yet it can also be the word becoming flesh, a part of your own flesh and blood, a part of your own life. The Lord is embedded in you with his life and his light and his heart and his love, enabling you to participate in his journey of mercy so that you can participate and partner with him in bringing that mercy about. Because there's a couple of other pieces of mercy that I just want to share with you. One is, again, we're taught in the theology from our new church, for the new church that there's no mercy without means. Well, what does that mean? It means... The Lord, with his life and his love, needs partnership. He needs help, as it were, to transmit that love from his divinity to other people. That it doesn't just happen by magic. It doesn't just happen on its own. The Lord is seeking that partnership. So there's no mercy without some means or some catalyst that enables that to happen. Well, if you keep reading about that kind of stuff, and I know it's pretty theological, but if you keep reading a little bit more about that, there's another stunning passage, which is charity, or the life of charity, is the means of, guess what? Of mercy. Charity is the means of mercy. There's no mercy without means. Charity is how the Lord brings mercy into the world. And the Lord is active. He is working with all his infinite powers throughout the entire universe. And that does affect us. But this is the call that the Lord has to partnership. And this truly is the Lord becoming flesh. For he invites us to live the message. He invites us to reach out so that we can participate with him to help others raise up out of just collective badness and misery. 
And just one point about that, that the Lord is offering us something infinite. So when we're talking about mercy, when we're talking about that actual connection making place, it's always lifting us up into something heavenly. And if it's truly heavenly, it is without end. It is something that is everlasting. It affects the person that we are operating with and it stays with them tomorrow and the next day and to all eternity. It survives death, it keeps going, it is a part of heavenly life itself, and it is the real substance of what makes us truly human. So join with me. Celebrate Christmas with a heart of mercy. Celebrate Christmas with the desire to reach out and lift others up out of misery, introducing them into what's truly heavenly from the Lord. That is the advent of the Lord with us. That is the flesh dwelling among us, and we can behold its glory. In a minute, we're going to light candles, and I just think that that is just such a wonderful illustration and symbol of what we're really talking about. Because you look at the, the candle, and you look at the flame of the candle, and it's burning there, and we turn out the lights, and the candle can light almost the whole room. Just one candle makes a tremendous difference, right? And that's the light. And that light is symbolic of the truth that the Lord brought into the world. And that truth is the construct that shows us how we're supposed to live. But if you put your hand too close to the light, what happens? You burn your hand. Because it's hot as well. And what we, heat, what we have here is a flame, is a perfect combination of light and heat love and wisdom. Those two together are the recipe for true mercy. That's how we learn to find the life that lives to eternity. And just one final thought. I think of faith. Faith that uses the truth for charity for mercy is a faith that is alive. If it's used for anything else, it's, it's dead. It only lives to the degree that it is used to bring life, to bring the Lord's eternal life, to bring that mercy and thereby lift the Lord's children up so that they can experience that love. Everything in the Bible, everything in the Word is given to us for one purpose. It's given to us so that we can look at it, think about it, and use that to bring the Lord's mercy into the world. So again, let's celebrate Advent. Let's celebrate the Lord coming into our lives and being made flesh by taking his mercy and acting on it, by helping and lifting others up and celebrating his love and his wisdom, that which lives to eternity, and blessing others with his life. Amen. Please join us in singing Angels We Have Heard on High on page 209.
From the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of humanity. And and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to everyone coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we behold his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Please join us in singing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel on page 227.
Please join us in singing Away in a Manger on page 210. This comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. Now, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, 
keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told them. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, 
and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I will bring the blind by a way they did not know. I will lead them in paths they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you and the nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. You are the light of the world. A star and found it from the east. We've come so far to get here. We held one hope that we might find a king. How could we know that he would be? us, Emmanuel, come to us, the King of Israel abides with us in this little boy. child is God with us. We brought him gold and frankincense and myrrh. When rich is untold, he left behind. brought our best to celebrate the king who left his throne so he could be God with us Emmanuel come to us the king of Israel boy who would know we'd find mortal and mystery somehow intertwined this baby child is God with us I was truly shining for in this little boy 
Who would know we'd find the Creator born, Redeemer of mankind. And the hand of God is reaching out for mine. This baby child is God with us. Mary's baby child is God with us. While we have the lighting of the candles, the band will perform an interlude of Silent Night, and then we will invite everyone to join us in singing it, and that will be on page 232. Sleep in 
Would you please rise for the benediction and closing of the word? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and give you peace. Please be seated. Please join us in singing Joy to the World on page 221. play a series of preludes and during this time you are invited to come up to the chancel here and light a candle if there's somebody that you're thinking of this Christmas that you'd like to say a prayer for or just put your light into the world you are invited and welcome to do that and you are um, welcome to leave when you are ready please make sure your candle is safely extinguished before you go There is a star that shines tonight for all the world to see. So far away my lover is, please bring him home to me. The world is weary and unrest has settled on us all. Tonight my Christmas wish will be for all to heed the call. Peace on earth. the weary and 
the week keep you near this Christmas Eve there is a star that shines for you Oh, 
this winter night with you and to be once again with you. So this is Christmas, and what have you done? Another year over, and the new one just begun. And so this is Christmas, I hope you have fun, the dear and the dear one. Yeah. Mm -hmm.